All right, guys. So we're going to get into our uh, tenant review, um, and we're going to do it much like our Wonder Woman review. Where first we'll kind of do, you know, just our general spoiler-free impressions, and then we might get into some more spoiler territory. Although, like I kind of alluded to earlier, like I don't know how much of this yeah. movie I can really. I don't think it'll be super spoiler-heavy. Just we're because. not going to make it less confusing. <laughs> yeah, just because of, yeah. Of one view of this movie, like I'm still like. I even like watched some YouTube videos today, like you know, Tenet explained just to see if I could like wrap my head around it a little more, and I'm yeah, I'm still confused. Let's see if anybody put it, anything together out of there. <laughs> I will say, if anybody out there like has a specific movie they like us to review, uh, let us know in the comments or let us know on Twitter. Speaking of which, guys, let's get our Twitter plugs in. Where can people follow you and recommend movies to review on Twitter? I am at a name for this too, and that's the number two. At unsolicited SCG. I'd love to talk to you guys. And you can find me at Zach Jones Live, Z A C H J O N E S L I V E. And if anybody, you know, listening really likes movie related content, I think all the way back on episode three, we did our top 10 movies of the 2010s. And I think it's a really fun uh, discussion on movies. All right, guys, let's get into it. So, Tenet, we all watched Tenet. Um, the movie synopsis reads as thus. A secret agent embarks on a dangerous, time-bending mission to prevent the start of World War III. The movie was directed by one of my favorite directors, Christopher Nolan. It stars John David Washington as a character known only as the protagonist, uh, Robert Pattinson, Elizabeth Debicki, and Kenneth Branagh. So, guys, what did you guys kind of, just kind of think, spoiler-free impressions, uh, first time viewing this movie? It's complicated. Yes. <laughs> it's very complicated. Yeah, it's just a hot, confusing mess. Uh, I I even rewound a couple of times trying to figure out what the fuck was going on, and, like, it's just, uh, I couldn't put it together. Yeah, this is a movie you have to watch multiple times. Yeah, well, the thing but is... But I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the thing is, you call it a mess, and the tr truth of the matter is it's probably not a mess. Like, it probably is tightly written and probably things do pay off and make sense it's just trying to actually figure it out in your mind can possibly drive you crazy <laughs> I, I mean maybe i mean sometimes i like a movie that leaves me with some questions that i can mull over and, and then like I, I i even sometimes really enjoy that but like i just felt like it's going nowhere like <laughs> like I feel something fundamentally doesn't make sense. Yeah, I guess my my overall general impression of the film is just watching it one time is I liked it okay. But the thing is, you know, on that show where we did our favorite movies of the 2010s, my favorite movie on that list was Inception. And I remember the, the very first time I watched Inception, like I was like, I definitely didn't get it all in one viewing because you really can't. But I, at the end of the movie, I was like, I, I know I really like this movie. And I think with Inception, the thing is, is there's uh, – you really connect to like the, the emotional journey the characters are going on. Like you understand Leonardo DiCaprio's motivation and right. it's compelling. Whereas this movie was a little more uh, sterile, I guess. Like, I, I never was that emotionally invested in any of the characters. Yeah, they're all kind of, like, blah. And you're so busy, like, trying to figure out whatever the fuck it is supposed to be going on that you kind of, I don't know. It, it's like being lost in a, a bad way. Yeah, so let's kind of, we'll go into, you know, kind of, you know, spoilery territory now. So... What we find out is that basically, <sighs> I don't know how well I can explain this. There's objects in the world that have been inverted, like they're traveling backwards in time. So like there's these bullets that, you know, go backwards from where they impacted, like, you know, back into a gun or, you know, things like that. And, you know, at a certain point in the movie, we find out there's actually this a machine, I think they call it a turnstile that somebody can go in and basically kind of change the co course of the direction right. they're and going that in. Thing can move backwards in time, or or basically like entropy works backwards, which is the equivalent of moving back in time. Yeah, the, and that stuff, boy, like wrapping your try. That's and that's the core thing in this movie is trying to wrap your head around that. Well, even in the movie, they say don't try to understand it yeah. because it's bullshit. Yeah, there is a line like, that. but there's also like they're trying to make things 
you know, that are like moving backwards in time or reverse entropy, but then they also have like apparently some area around them that's affected by this. So they have things that are moving in normal time affected by entropy and things that aren't. And then they make up all these like weird little bullshit rules that involve the backward part. And like, it just doesn't make sense. That's the thing. I was like, so there's that scene where they're the action scene where they're like on the, the highway. Yeah. And like they're going and you know, this all of a sudden this car comes out of nowhere going backwards that has, you know, Kenneth Branagh's character in it. And that's another thing. Sometimes people going backward are moving backwards, sometimes they're moving forward. It's very Yeah. It doesn't like it seems inconsistent, but it might not be. And that's the thing is, and then like eventually, um, you know, John David Washington's character re-enters that scene going the other way. But I'm like, somehow in my brain, there's this disconnect where I'm like, I can't exactly like, I, I'm still not sure what's going on. Like, uh, in, in how those two like interact, you know, it's it's weird. Your mind does this kind of disconnect where I'm like, I'm like, if I watch this enough times, will I actually what understand what's going on here? And I'm not sure I will. <laughs> yeah, I, I suspect not. It just, like, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. He was pretty quick to, like, accept the new, like, reality around him, too. Like, so, spoiler alert here. At the beginning of the movie, you know, he he's in a scenario where he right you know, he's an operative and it looks like he's with like the CIA or something yeah and uh, you know an event happens where he he has to make a life or death decision and he does and based on that you know he's some secrets are revealed to him right like that was like supposed to be a test yeah so when he like took the pill to kill himself like he proved himself worthy or something yeah that's another thing in this movie there's so many different people and organizations with unexplained interests many of which don't make any sense um so like the one of the key characters is like this russian villain uh is like a Bond villain or something. Yeah, Kenneth Branagh's character. But um, so the people who actually want to change the past with this terrorist device, they created the first thing that can go back in time. So they planted like these uh, nuclear stockpiles or something with gold and a letter, and they knew they would go back in time. And the person who would find it was this guy with like defense contracts, this Russian guy or whatever. So if somehow they hire him from the future to do this weird fucked up shit. And you're just like, what's their motive? Like, what's, why did they want to destroy the world? And then like, well, how did they find this guy? And how did it tie into his like weird story of like, I'm going to kill everybody in the world with me or whatever. It had something to do with like global warming or something. Yeah, like, the future was like ruined environmentally yeah. or something. Yeah, what I gleam from it, yeah, exactly, is that the future, like global warming and things, like fuck everything up. And so that's why in that one scene they're kind of talking about the the grandfather paradox. And so I think what they're saying is like the the people in the future that put this plan to have Kenneth Branagh destroy the past. They're thinking it doesn't, it won't affect them basically if the grandfathers die, if we all die. It, it will. Yeah, there's like parallel universes. Yeah, so th what they're thinking is that it, it'll basically wipe out what we've done to the planet, uh, but not kill them in the future. And, and it'll basically save the planet in the future if we all die. That's kind of what I glean from. I'm, I, I don't know if that's 100% accurate. So then, like. <laughs> So is there part of their plan is that this Russian guy is, is going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll roll with this and I'll kill everybody because I, I, if, you know, I can't take it with me, then fuck it or something. Yeah, I, I think they basically knew that he was going to die and that his personality profile was somebody that would do that. I don't know. It's all so convoluted. And that, like, yeah, there, there there definitely is some, like, convolution, I think. Like, anybody listening to this is like, what the fuck are you talking <laughs> about? It's just, yeah. I, I wasn't even sure what that Indian lady's, like, role was in the whole thing. How, what was well, she? Well, she's, like, so she's apparently some defense, um, you, you know, she sells arms or arms dealers or something. Mm -hmm. But they traced, like, the bullets that were being going backwards in time to her company or something. So that's how he w 
why he went to her because he thought that she was you know part of it or something mm. she definitely had some knowledge of the future um somehow because they had that conversation too where she kind of explained like the genesis of the whole thing was there was this female scientist in the future and she discovered that with like you know radiation but she could basically invert items and send them back into the past. And then she realized that this was going to cause the bad guys to try to destroy the past. So she's the one that, you know, made that algorithm and split it up and all those different metal things and put them in like the nuclear facilities. Cause that's where they would be most secure or whatever. And again, yeah, people listening to this, that haven't seen the movie. This is why we can't really spoil it because you listen to this and you're just like, what the fuck are they talking about? This is a real movie. Um, but yeah, I, another thing like they're, they're doing like, they're playing with like the inverted bullets or whatever. <laughs> and so they're like, if she sets it there and she's like, Oh, like basically if you think about how you dropped it, then it'll like, it comes up and you can catch it or whatever. And you're just like, you never like dropped it or like it was something weird. It, yeah. it was like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't totally understand that part either. It's like, Catching it and dropping it were like the same thing or something. Uh, yeah. It's like it just isn't. Yeah, it was like, so you, like you can kind of move it with your mind? I, I, that's the part I didn't really. Like you had to yeah. think about how you had dropped it or something. In order to catch it or, yeah, bring it. Yeah. Um, there's that, def- that was part of like the entropy items interacting with the non-entropy items. You know, in Inception, they have that whole scene with, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio and Ellen Page where they kind of explain how being in a shared dream works. And I think that sequence in Inception does a really good job of, you know, it's something you can wrap your mind around in Inception. Whereas this scene um, with him and the female scientist where she's going over the rules of the world, you're still left kind of like, huh? Like, it just doesn't work as well. And and you're left scratching your head. You're right. I I think that's maybe the key difference is they're both like high profile concepts but one of them is put together better and it works a little bit better because this is like this wants to be like a spy action movie yeah but then it's just convoluted yeah in fact in a i saw an uh i watched one of like special features on this and like nolan was talking about how, with inception that was kind of you know his take on a heist movie and then this was kind of his take on a spy movie and they all kind of have these central like you know sci-fi thing thrown right. in to make him different you it, know it felt like more of a gimmick yeah i just feel like maybe there was a a way to do it in a more i don't know palatable you like like i don't want to sound dumb and i don't think i am but like <laughs> right. um this movie made me feel dumb like i like i'm like i was boy. kind of having like the emperor's new clothes like Am I, am I supposed to be stupid if I say, oh, yeah, this is brilliant or something? It's like, this shit doesn't make sense. Mm. Still, I will say I didn't I didn't hate this movie. I'm just kind of perplexed by it. And so I'm like, uh, it doesn't have it doesn't have the appeal with Inception, like the emotional appeal where I think I'll want to watch it over and over again. But I definitely do want to uh, watch it again sometime in the future and just see if I can wrap my head around it a little better but you're right you're definitely not like vested in any of the characters i mean maybe maybe the most for me was probably like his partner oh robert pattinson yeah Yeah, maybe see i thought maybe uh elizabeth dubecky's character because you do at times like you know feel for her well yeah you have some empathy but like she doesn't give off like a lot of emotion or like a lot of uh you know, she's not like super relatable, and then also like their relationship. You're just like, just like okay, you're like you're forcing these people together somehow. Yeah, it felt like that too. Well, and it doesn't feel like they really have like a romantic relationship either, does it? Not really. No. Uh, you know, one of those videos I watched today that kind of broke things down says like one of their theories is she's like actually. Uh, kind of the one pulling the strings and like um you know from the like put, put putting him into place and, and things like that 
And like they list some things that you go, well, maybe that's what the screenwriter yeah. I mean, intended, there's a but maybe things not. You could probably insert in there. They also theorized that, uh, you know, how she has like her young son. Yeah. They theorized that that might be Robert Pattinson. Yeah, I saw that too. But like, I. Uh, Again, it's like I don't know if there's really something to that. They, they kind of go over some things. I'm like, well, maybe, but maybe not. Yeah. You know, he was blonde. Only, only the screenwriters know for sure, I guess. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, well, well, what about anymore. like barring like your overall feelings of the movie? Like, did, did you guys like any of the performances of, like of the characters, or like how do you think the acting performances were? I mean, I, think, I don't think they were bad. It's just... Yeah. You just think what they were given was just like... Yeah, kind of meh. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of wish the movie had a better emotional hook like Inception does. Um, but like I said, I, I do think I will revisit this movie in the future and see if I can piece it together a little better. Um, and also, I just... From an action standpoint, the whole, you know, things going backwards... Is it maybe the like the most interesting thing in the world? Yeah. Hey, did you guys understand that that final um, you know battle scene uh, where all the soldiers are you know going? They have that scene where like they they blow up that that building tower once, and then it goes back together, and then the other team blows it up again. What was the reason behind that? Well, it seemed like like at that specific point in time, he needed some kind of a diversion. Mm. Like he he needed something because there was like enemy shooting or something, so he he needed some diversion so he could move forward or something. I think that might be right. But yeah, he's kind of cutting back and forth. It's like it's it's down on the ground, it's raising up, it's falling down again. <laughs> like, uh. <laughs> but uh, now, let me ask you this. Uh, would you guys recommend this movie to people? I don't think so. No. I wouldn't. I wouldn't watch it again. I'm not interested. I would say a lot of people yeah, it's hard because a lot of people I know wouldn't be interested in this at all. I, I would say if you're a you know, a big Nolan fan. Like you well, have to you'd be by yourself anyway, but. in the quiet where you can just pay attention and like give away two and a half hours to something that's not Amazing. I mean, and that's what I did, but still, at the end of the movie, I, I was definitely yeah, perplexed. I was still confused. I, I couldn't watch this movie all the way through. I had to take breaks. I had to yeah. do other stuff. Yeah. No, I rewound a couple times, and I was just like, plus, I don't know why. If it was just my like my hearing, it just seemed like kind of muffled. Like, like they'd be talking, and I'd be having really like struggling to. Yeah, I definitely had subtitles on in this movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. But I heard that ahead of time. I heard the sound mixing was uh, like in a place where it made some of the dialogue hard to listen to. So, like knowing that going in, I turned on the subtitles. Yeah, I turned it up quite a bit. But it, yeah, there'd be like ocean sounds and stuff in the background, and you'd be like, you'd be getting washed out. And I'd be, like, I'm confused enough, man. Also, like um, the music they were playing, like right as they were ramping into that highway scene, was like really weird to my ears. Like, because it like. W went oh, up yeah. and then they like cut it off and it was like I don't know it sound it sounded weird. Yeah, they're trying to build tension, but it was like a weird beat or something. Yeah, like yeah, I remember that. Um, last thing, what do you guys? What would you give this uh, sc score? One to ten, or zero to ten? I guess. I'd give it like a six to ten. Yeah, maybe five. I'll give it. I'll give it a seven. Yeah, it's just it's it's okay, and maybe 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 if I ever understand it better, maybe I raise that up a bit. But it, it's definitely no Inception, or or it, you know, it's not up there. I don't think among Nolan's finest movies, but uh, but definitely a I guess interesting experiment. My score could go up, like if I see more breakdowns of this movie and like show like how everything made sense. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm still. I might dig into that more too. Just go down that rabbit hole a little more and see if someone smarter than me can explain it to yeah. me. Because, <laughs> like, I do think Nolan's like scripts tend to be, you know, you know, pretty intricate and, and tend to make sense. So, like, I'm thinking that like it probably like 
does make more sense. It's just, you know, I don't know, a matter of parsing out how things are w working. But um, but all right, that was our kind of muddled review yeah. <laughs> of Tenet. Um, and if you haven't watched it, I think after you watch it, you'll kind of see why, <laughs> why this is a hard movie to review. Um, but like I said, it, you know, anyone out there who enjoys, you know, these type of movie uh, discussions, you know, throw us out a movie and we'll, we'll definitely, you know, give it a watch and review it. And well, maybe I shouldn't say it unless you throw out something really shitty. <laughs> <laughs>